Hi guys, Tiffany here. Today is Tuesday, August 23rd, and we are in my studio right now. I decided to do something more casual since my parent pickup lines have been so unpredictable, and I found that I actually had more that I wanted to talk to you about, and I thought maybe this would be a more casual place for us to just kind of hang out, chill, and take it in. There's a lot I want to share with you today. Um, oh my gosh. The weather in particular, so we're getting hit with a whole lot of rain right here in Texas right now. I've heard it's from a storm coming up from the Gulf, uh, and it makes sense because there's just been so much rain, but that's very welcomed because we've literally just experienced two solid months of every day being over 100 degrees. So having the rain come and chill out the weather, it's in the 70s now, it feels a a lot better. The only downfall of it raining is that my studio is in the backyard apart from the house. So I literally like walked out the back door and I was like, I really don't want to walk in that. <laughs> I, I actually like, I ended up like going to the door closest to my studio from the backyard so I had the shortest distance I had to travel. But I still managed to like soak my bag. It, there's still some water like on it and I am wet but I'm wearing black so you can't really see what's going on. But I'm like, I've got to figure this out. I got to invest in a big umbrella or something because one, the rain, it's no fun to be rained on. And two, I'm going to eventually have to figure out how to like make a path to my studio from the house. That way I'm not walking in mud because I did not want to track mud into the studio. That's just, I don't, I like my studio to be clean. Like I am a perfectionist. I am like... I like things very, very clean, so I'm constantly cleaning up in here because um, it's like, it's my space, you know, it's, it's mine, and I want to make sure I feel comfortable in my space. I don't like distractions like messes. Messes stress me out because they're a distraction, and then I'm focused more on the mess than the things that I need to do or have to do, you know what I mean? So, a couple things that I realized today <laughs> were some things that I'm going to need to focus on, take... Uh, take some action on because we're supposed to rain like every day this week and I'm not just going to not come into my studio. I have stuff to do. Like today, I'm recording today. I'm finishing recording my video that's going to be released this Friday. I am making a crochet mat. I think it's technically, you could use it as a bath mat, but I don't want to pigeonhole it and just say bath mat. I just want to say crochet mat because I have stepped on it like felt it and I'm like, I could use this in so many places and I could be inspired to just make this mat into a huge rug and just use it in a space. The only bummer part of using or turning it into a rug is it's a lot of work. It'd be super heavy and it wouldn't be the easiest to clean, but I guess most rugs aren't that easy to clean anyway. So it's an option, but it's definitely something I've contemplated. And I'm gonna go over that in, in this video today. I'm gonna to share some projects with you and uh, just kind of have a lot to talk about. In fact, I wrote it all down. We're gonna open up my bag here. I love, love, love this bag and I might show it off to you guys. I think I've showed it off to you guys like a year ago when I first got it, but I'll, I'll kind of show it off to you guys again. This is probably gonna be a, one of my longer videos because I have some more time to spend with you today. So I hope you don't mind that I just kind of hang out with you today. Um, Mary, this is one of the things that you sent to me. It's that little clippy board thingy. I'm actually using it all the time. <laughs> and so thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it. I actually, uh, my sticky notes, I have like lined sticky notes and they fit perfectly in this space, like to the point where this design actually hits perfectly around it. And I was like, that was meant to be. It was just meant to be. So thank you, Mary, for that. Uh, some talking points I wrote down here so that way I could try to stay on track because I have a tendency to get caught on a tangent and then forget where I started. <laughs> it's just it's just what I do. And also this, it, I, uh, I really like to sit on the floor. I feel more casual when I sit on the floor. I guess it's grounding to me. Um, and I just feel a little more laid back. I like I can actually chill out a little bit more when I'm 
at my desk or sitting on a couch, I feel more formal, like I need to um, speak quicker, talk, uh, get to the point faster, you know, and just be more formal and <sighs> talking points and then end. But I really want my vlogs to be more casual and I want my vlogs to be more like we are just chilling, hanging out, and I'm sharing behind the scenes what's, I mean, that's the, the title of this vlog channel is Behind the Scenes with Tiffany because I wanna show you what's happening behind the scenes and all that other extra fun stuff. Uh, what do I got going on? So let's talk about some whips because I know a lot of us like to talk about crochet and the projects that we're working on. So this right here, is the start of the mat, that crochet mat. I'm calling it Walking on Clouds because these, they are puff stitches. So I'm sorry, PJ, I know how you feel about puff stitches. <laughs> I know you prefer bobbles, but this particular pattern called for puff stitches and they, because I'm making the stitches loose and I'm working with t-shirt yarn, they feel so squishy that I'm finding myself periodically just putting it on the ground and stepping on it and I'm like, this is so comfortable. I love this. Like I could, I could lay on this. It's so comfy. And like you could legit make this into like just a heavy blanket to put on your bed if you wanted to, but I'm just making a small square mat to kind of get the point across on how to make the pattern and then you can do with the pattern whatever you want to do. But um, somebody asked me in my last Q&A session, I don't know, did you catch that in my last Q&A um, where I was sitting here on the couch and talking about or answering questions? Um, somebody asked me if I had ever worked with t-shirt yarn before and I was like, actually no. Like I have cut strips of material out and made rag rugs. I've made rag rugs before, which were a lot of fun, but talk about you're, you're working out when you're making rag rugs because you're working with this thicker material, you're working with giant crochet hooks and your whole um, hand placement and how you're working with everything is completely different because it's more like you're digging that crochet hook into the stitch, yarning over and pulling and then, and pulling. And it's literally like you are trying to start a chainsaw or your lawnmower, like the whole time you are working. It's like, uh, insert, yarn over, pull, insert, yarn over, pull. It's crazy, but it's worth it because um, rag rugs are a lot of fun and they make this really cool design and it's cool working with other mediums, other materials and just seeing what you can do and what you're capable of. It's really, really neat. Um, I might eventually have to make a rag rug just to kind of show you guys how to do it or the process. It's super simple. You're working very, very basic stitches and depending on if you are working, sorry, I'm like drippy. Depending on if you are working in rounds or if you're working in oval shape or even working a rectangular shape, uh, it's basic, basic stitches because you don't want necessarily the stitches of a rag rug to be the star of the show. You want the design of the, uh, the pattern, the colors of the material to shine. You know, you want those to be what you look at. You want to be able to see the details of how the colors blend together and interconnect and that's the cool part of a rag rug. I mean, when you're thinking rag rug, you're thinking, oh, these are my scraps. You know, these are, these are just, um, you know, those old school rough, this is what they had to work with, so this is what they worked with kind of thing. Not intending on, oh, I want to make a rag rug, so I'm going to go spend two, three hundred dollars at the store on material to make this gorgeous rag rug. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, yeah, that's what it's become, and those make some great projects too, but I kind of like the scrappier rag rugs that are like, wow, like those materials are completely different. The material itself, the colors are, they complement well, you know, it's just, it's an art form. It's super neat. So um, getting back to just working with big materials. Oh, t-shirt yarn, we were talking about t-shirt yarn. So it's, it's not 
a yarn per se. It's not individual fibers from an animal or um, acrylics, polyamide stuff. It's not, it's not that that's been twisted and put into a skein, a hank of cake. It's legit like t-shirt material that is cut into strips and then put in a ball so it's easy to work with and then you crochet with it or do whatever you want with it, macrame, knitting. And uh, I really appreciate that it is strong. I really like that it's strong. I really like that it's uh, squishy, it's soft, it's easy to care for. Like if it gets dirty, uh, the care instructions are super easy to, to wash it, care for it, or if you just need, if it's too big to go in the washing machine, you know, using just some kind of squirt bottle um, and scrub. Even if you scrub it, you're not ruining it like you would a yarn. So I like that a lot. And it makes for a very durable project, like the mat, like a basket, um, any home decor item, the t-shirt yarn just really shines. It's really awesome for those. Uh, so I plan on using it more often, but yeah, somebody in the Q and A, that's where it came from, the Q and A. <laughs> somebody from the Q and A asked me if I've ever used t-shirt yarn, haven't wanted to give it a try. So I went on amazon.com and I f looked up t-shirt yarn and I found a company called Fox Yarns it's Fox, the, the Fox Yarn Company, um, and they have a lot of t-shirt yarns, t-shirt skeins, and they promise that they have like one joining knot per skein, which is not true, uh, but I will say there were very few joining knots in their skein. I think there was maybe three in an entire skein of yarn, and these skeins are 140 yards of material wrapped up. So what I'm thinking is they had these huge, huge sheets of t-shirt yarn and they were able to make these really, really long cuts and be, and all of this yarn is uh, consistently one inch wide, which I appreciate because when I cut my own strips, there's no consistency in that. <laughs> Some are two inches wide and then all of a sudden it just gradually makes it sway to like one inch or a half an inch. And I'm like, I can't cut a straight strip to save my life. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Uh, so I appreciated that, that all the yarn was consistently cut, but you can tell that, um, big huge sheets of material that they cut and then joined and it was really really nice working with it it is really nice working with it that there are very few joining knots so I can really get in the rhythm and even when I do join or come upon a joining knot it's not intrusive or that big of a deal uh, they did a really good job of cutting the ends clean so that way it doesn't obnoxiously show a tail here and there in the work. It just blends in, which is awesome. So uh, I even think I showed that I use the invisible joining method like I do with all my projects, but I used it with this project to show people I used two skeins to make my mat. There's gonna be a point where you're gonna have to join a new skein on there and how I joined was with the invisible knot. And the the result of my invisible knot looks almost identical to the joining method that they use to continue joining material to their skein. I was like, that's really interesting. I, I, I think that's funny. I wonder if they use the same technique. So, and anyways, I'm very much enjoying working with this material uh, and I'm inspired. I am using the color bone because it's just neutral and people can, they can almost take this color and visually see, well, this color goes with really any decor because it is neutral and you could honestly have it work with most spaces. Um, and that's what I wanted was something that you could see yourself like making it and it working with your space. Uh, but they do on their website have lots of different color options, which I think is a lot of fun. And if people want to change the color, they absolutely could. But working with this neutral color, it allows people to have more of an imagination. Whereas if I did just kind of work up a whole pink one, I could see people saying, I don't want to do that project because I don't want to make a pink item. Well, it's not necessarily you have to make or use the same color that I'm doing, but people seem to have more of an imagination when you work with a neutral color. 
So that is Friday's tutorial. Right now I have recorded um, up to this step and now I'm at the step where I'm like, okay, repeat this repeat this pattern till you re reach the end of round nine. So I have to make it to the end of round nine. So that way I can then come back in front of the camera and be like, okay, great. Now we have made it to the end of round nine. Now we can tie off our project and be done. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm getting myself to the end of round nine. All right. So that's one project I'm working on. To be released very, very soon is my Warm Up America swatches. I made a swatch and I used uh, the closed scallop crochet stitch because I noticed a lot of the swatches that I was making, they had a lot of uh, holes in them or uh, the stitches just... I wanted something more dense, if that makes sense. So that's that's what my point is with these, is I really wanted something, a, a crochet stitch that was more dense. And I was thinking, gosh, a lot of people that I know really enjoy shells, fans, scallops, and it can work up really fast and it is dense. But I was like, will that work? Will I be able to make, um, that stitch fit dimension, that seven by nine inch dimension, because it has to be so specific. And with the stitch count requirement, I'm like, uh, I wanna make sure it hits, right? So I did make this pattern um, and it's using, and I go over this in the video too, but I just have scrap yarn. I have a lot of scrap yarn and I found these red, white, and blue colors to go with our campaign. and. <clears throat> They're all, I love this yarn. So if you're curious from Hobby Lobby, it's all, I love this yarn. Um, I, it's a four weight yarn. So originally I worked with a crochet hook size H8, five millimeter, because those go hand in hand most times, right? That That's generally my go-to is a four weight yarn with an H8. It's a five millimeter crochet hook. Those, those are the materials that I used most dominantly in my projects. Um, but I worked up half a swatch, or not, uh, half a rectangular section, and I measured, and it was over dimension. And I'm like, oh crap, okay, so this isn't gonna work. And I knew though that if I took away one scallop, I think I did, I think I then took away one scallop to see if it would then meet width dimension and it didn't, it was too, too little. And I was like, okay, so it's not meeting dimension with this crochet hook size. The stitches are just too big. I'm wondering, I'm curious if I go down a crochet hook size, if it'll make my stitches just tight enough to hit dimension and it did, it worked. <clears throat> I was so grateful. So. I'm using the G6 four millimeter crochet hook. Um, not the 4.5, but the four millimeter crochet hook. I think I think a 4.5 would work too. So four, 4.5, they're so close that it would be fine. It really would be. So a G6 and um, it, it hit perfectly with the dimension. It was right, right there. So I was like, yes, it works, awesome. So. Then I made the whole swatch or the whole rectangular section and it worked up so fast and it was actually really fun and you get to the point where once you see the pattern, you're not counting at all. You don't need to count because it's just, where's that stitch? Where's that stitch? Where's that stitch? Got it. I know exactly what I'm doing. And so it just works up so fast and I've already made one, two, three, four, five of them, but that's me also working on multiple projects at the same time. I wanna make more. We still have till September 9th to get our Warm Up America stuff in, or shipped in to Warm Up America. Uh, and so I'm doing my part. I hope you're participating. Let me know in the comment section below. Are you, are you participating? Even if you can get just one rectangle section finished and shipped in, just one, you're helping to make us 
get that much more to help their cause. And so that would be really cool if you could do that. If shipping is an issue or you can't leave your house, don't worry about it. It's, it's just something that's a lot of fun that um, even if you want to just make something to make something and hang on to it, <laughs> uh, even just play with the pattern, you could do that. Okay, so that is another thing that I am working on right now. Um, what do I want to talk about next? My planner. So the next whip, I got a couple things in here that I'm working on is for not this week, but next week. Have you guys ever seen bandana cowls? So I've seen cowls before, but um, I was doing a search and noticed that bandana cowls are quite popular right now. So I tried, I tried playing with this pattern a couple different ways and it was not working for me. And I finally found a way that I think is going to nail it and I'm really excited. So I'm working with <clears throat> some yarn that I got from the Hobby Lobby clearance sale when I went crazy and got a bunch of yarn. Unfortunately, this color is, um, this yarn is discontinued. I wonder if you could still find this color in a different yarn, but what I'm doing is I'm making this V shape. I'm going to join the back flat parts to make it round so it's a cowl, but then when it is worn, it's got like this bandana look to it, which is really neat, really cool. And this yarn is super comfy cozy. I really, really love it. Um, I'll have the specs on it in the video, but I don't have, do I have the labels in here? I don't think I have the labels in here. Do I? Maybe, this might be it. A uh, Yarn Bee Fireplace Comfort uh, in the color, splash of color. And again, I don't think they sell this anymore. I think it was discontinued, unfortunately. But I'm trying to use the yarn that I have. Um, and this is a size four weight yarn. So if you wanted to find another yarn that you really enjoyed, having a color that is, um, oh, I'm gonna totally draw a blank on words, variegated having a color that is variegated, you know, where the colors interchange, um, interlock, a tweed, a tweed is really, really pretty with this pattern. So I'm going to keep going with this and I plan on making it two skeins big. I want, I want the top point to hit like right above my belly button. So that way it's like huge and very, I love obnoxiously big, comfy, cozy things. So how much yarn would that be? If I used a full two skeins of yarn, so one skein has 229 meters, so we'll say 230. So that would be like 460 or 458 yards of yarn. Meters would be 200 or 420, because there's 210 yards, or can't even speak, 210 meters of yarn per skein, so 420 meters, 300 grams and 10, 0.6 ounces of yarn approximately for the size that I'm planning on achieving. So I am using a very simple pattern because I want it, I want people to focus more on um, the construction, the structure of this bandana cowl. And I think I do that with a lot of projects actually. I want to really allow room for you to be creative yourself. Uh, so I will create a very simple design, simple pattern. And then once you get how to construct it, you can then go back and use a different pattern if you want using the same construction method that I did. And hopefully you can then design your own pattern and that's very exciting when you can be super creative. Um, and that's where I'm at this year. This year has been a big, big deal for me is I just go back for patterns and I find how it's constructed. And then once I know how things are constructed, I can have more creative flexibility and be like, oh, I wanna make that, but I wanna use this pattern. Or, oh, I wanna make that, but I wanna combine these two stitches together to make it, you know? And uh, so that's what I've been doing a lot with my videos is trying to be very generic in a way with my pattern, 
try to have the pattern be flattering so you want to do it but offering a lot of room for you to have your own creative freedom such as the Nubu tank top so the Nubu tank top I was like you know what I want to make this tank top I found how it was constructed by making two panels and just joining two panels together uh, I was able to also offer you different ways of um, I can't speak this morning <clears throat> different ways of altering it changing it for yourself like the straps the length the width um, lots of different ways that you could adjust it yourself if you chose to if you wanted to that were simple it wasn't like oh gosh I have to fuss with a stitch count requirement or oh my gosh I have to fuss with making sure that um I do this right or I do that right otherwise it's not going to work it's it's super easy it's just two panels joined together you know so uh and then I used a very basic stitch of that half double crochet placed between stitches instead of on top of stitches so it created that interlocking pattern but if you wanted to you now know okay if I wanted to use a different pattern I can use that different pattern and I just make this one panel and make an identical duplicate and then join them together and so uh, that's that's super fun for me that's super fun so this is uh, going to be not this week but next week hopefully I have a lot of crocheting I have to do and then I still need to create um, type up the pattern for it create a, a small little diagram I'm still working on diagrams so uh, diagrams are new to me this year I know how to follow a diagram um, I'm getting better at all of the symbols uh, so I've learned a lot of the symbols once you kind of uh, have experience with them or exposure to them they make more sense but uh, creating pa uh, diagrams this year was so incredibly new like I looked for a lot of different programs and finding a good program was not easy for me I ended up finding one program that I do like uh, and I'm still playing with it learning it there has only been like two YouTube videos showing how to actually use the program which I'm like great <laughs> and still both of those videos that show how to use it was from a person a one person perspective on each video on this is what I do with it but not like a complete overview on like if you want to do this this is how you do this if you want to do that this is how you do that it's it was kind of like a here's this button here's this button here's this button and uh, this is what that can do this is what that can do but not showing like how to actually do it and I'm like so how do I actually use it? <laughs> so I'm still kind of learning it in that regard myself. And a lot of my diagrams look, look a little bit rough. I mean, I try to at least get the point across or I'll color code. So that way you know it's a new round or a new row. Um, and I try to do my best with getting stitches to line up with where they're supposed to go but sometimes it's not easy man especially if there's a lot going on um, and you can do so much with these stitches like you can stretch them out you can make them bigger you can make them smaller you can rotate them you can uh, there's just a lot you can do with it so it's just like I'm realizing I'm having to just kind of play with it and learn it as I go so that's new for me but I'm gonna try to include diagrams wherever I think a diagram merits to be like when so, if somebody would benefit from the use of a diagram I try to add a diagram but but yeah what else do I have in my little bag of tricks so I am currently working on a Christmas gift it is another campfire cardigan so I had extra material left over from my last campfire cardigan because I just way overbought. <laughs> I didn't want I didn't well one I wanted to make a full one from the pattern to show off and then I needed to have extras for um, for crocheting in the video so I could show you how to do stuff in the video um, but I had more additional to that. So I am currently making a campfire cardigan for a friend, a family, uh, a family member of a really good friend. 
and this is where I'm at right now. I decided that since my last campfire cardigan, I thought the stitches were a bit loose, like it works, but um, using the crochet, I tried to use the same size crochet yarn and the same size crochet hook that the pattern creator used in her pattern because I wanted to be the same. I wanted to just replicate her pattern. And then I realized that my campfire cardigan turned out to be a lot more drapey and have a lot more holes than mm, maybe I would have preferred. Like it still looks great and, I, and it's, it's still functioning. It's still functional. But um, when it comes to me making it a second time, I decided to work with a smaller crochet hook. So I'm working with the H8 five millimeter crochet hook with the same size four weight yarn that I used with my other campfire cardigan and it's resulting in the stitches being tighter. There's still some looseness to it because it is a granny square, but they are tighter stitches and um, I'm hoping she loves it. So making a gift, I'm already focused on Christmas right now. I wonder if you are too. Um, I'm gonna try to do some research and study what uh, are some great crochet gifts that we could make for people this year. Crochet is very popular this year. It's hot topic. I don't know if you have noticed this, there's crochet everywhere. There's crochet clothes, cl crochet bags, crochet accessories. In every store, you're seeing it on like every TV show, uh, it's in fashion shows, I've seen fashion shows, I've seen magazines, I've seen models, I've seen singers, artists. Um, crochet is everywhere right now, it's super popular. So uh, I think that making crochet gifts this year is going to be a lot more accepted or a lot better received than maybe it was in the past. Uh, so depending on what you made in the past, people still love crochet, depending on if you were able to personalize it, like I mentioned in um, my cr Thanks to Crochet and Sell Fall Winter 2020. Need to update that video. I mean, still amazing content in it. A lot of it still very much applies, um, but I could update like uh, new things that you could make because people are constantly designing. People are constantly making really cool new things. And this year it's granny squares. Granny squares just seem to be super, super popular. Um, made with different fibers, made different ways. And what's really surprising is it's not even like these crazy fancy granny squares. It's like the basic, basic granny square. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the easy beginner friendly granny squares. And it's just a matter of um, the, the yarn that you use, the fiber. If you, I don't know if you've done this before, if you've played with this ever, but um, if you use, or if you make granny squares with, let's say, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby, and then you make the exact same granny square. With, let me, let me show you. Oh, I have this right here. I'll reach over and grab it. Okay, with like this size two weight yarn that I used to make um, the arrow square. I, I just need to block these. They're just over here in my to do section. There's extra stuff to do. Um, but if you made that exact same granny square in say this more wolf, a wool fiber or a different fiber or even used a t-shirt yarn to make the exact same granny square, it will take on a completely different look, a completely different vibe, and people receive it very differently. So take that into consideration when making your items, when making your gifts. Uh, if, and I hate to say it, but it's so true. I hate to say it, but it's so true. Um, the, the, the materials that you use will impact how it's received depending on what project it was that it was used on, okay? Um, what I'm referring to is if you know you're making something for somebody and they're not, they don't generally care about crochet, okay? 
um, don't make them something with a very cheap yarn because they will not appreciate it at all. If you want to make them something and you know they don't really have an appreciation for crochet, wow them with making them something with something special. Like uh, if you have to know the person too, know the person. Like if it's a guy, okay? If it's a guy and they're, they're just, they don't give any care about crochet items and you wanna make them a scarf, okay? Don't use a, a scratchy, cheap yarn because they're gonna look at it and they're going to completely disregard it and you might as well just throw it in the garbage and it's sad it's very sad but it's realistic if you want to make that same guy a crochet scarf make it for him in like one of those fisherman wools or make it for him in a really soft alpaca or make it for him in if you want to use cheaper yarns like use and I love this yarn, a, a yarn that is super soft, super comfy. It's scarfable, like Crystal from Bago de Crochet says. Um, it has all of those like comfy elements to it. Make sure it's comfy right off the bat and use their sports team, like something that they're super into, a sports team colors or a college alumni color or um, even if they're like into John Deere tractors <laughs> or <laughs> like, uh, you, you know, if they're into Harry Potter or if, um, you know, something they're super obsessed into, uh, think of them, like have them in mind and um, don't just, don't just go cheap because again, your love that goes into it and your time that goes into it is sometimes not enough for people. Okay, so, um, and I'll, I'll go into that with the top things to give this year for 2022 Christmas presents. Um, I will definitely go into that a little bit more, but don't, don't take it as, well, I don't have money to, to buy good yarn. I, you know, I get what I get and they just need to be appreciative. Uh, there, I mean, there's two sides to that coin, like, Yes, it would be nice for people to appreciate handmade things. And a lot of people do. A, a lot, a lot of people do. They appreciate the work and time and the, um, the fact that it was handmade. They do appreciate it. But also on your part, make sure that you thought of them too, that you understand that in order for them to like it, it has to be something that connects with them and their interests and understand that if it's a wearable item that you might want to use materials that are really comfortable to wear and not a material that was just inexpensive and I could afford that. You know, I'd rather you, and they too would probably rather you not buy that cheap yarn and get them something else then buy that cheap yarn just so that way you could say, I made you something from my heart. You know what I mean? So try to take that into consideration. And I really hope that resonates with some people because I've been there where I have put my heart and soul into a, something that I've crocheted and I've given it to somebody as a gift. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just, I, fully thought of you. I made it with my own two hands. I'm super excited to give this to you. And it was just received like, oh, thanks. Next, you know, and you're just like crushed. You're like, but why? Why did you not like my item that I made? It's because yes, we put the time and effort into it, but we did not put the thought into it, into the fact that it had nothing to do with anything they're interested in. And it had it was not comfortable to utilize, you know? So we gotta think we gotta think things all the way through. And that's something I'm working on. I will raise both hands on that. I am awful with following something through all the way to the end. Uh, sometimes I'll be, have the best intentions. I will have the best intentions with something. And then because I didn't follow it all the way through to the very end, it, it kind of fell way short 
and then I get frustrated and they get frustrated. The gifty gets frustrated and it's just like, okay. So trying to bestow some ex life experience that I've had onto you to hopefully prevent you from having that same experience. Okay, and that's all I'm really working on in this bag. Sammy, I keep this with me I'm in my bag all the time. It's your cup cozy thingy that you got me. <clears throat> so if I ever I need it, it's here ready for me to use. So I just wanted to show that to you. This bag is awesome. I use it all the time. It has so many compartments. So I showed this bag off a year ago, I think. I was talking to people about wanting a bag that, there's still stuff in it, so I'm gonna have to work around the stuff that's in it, because I use this bag. Um, so I'm gonna close it up. But um, I was looking for a bag that had compartments that I could stick yarn and that the yarn had a hole so I could thread the yarn through it and the, the yarn would stay in its individual pouch because a lot of the bags I have, and I have quite a few bags, they um, have the holes for you to thread the yarn through, but then inside the bag, the yarn will just kind of jump all around and get really tangled up and create a huge knotted headache for me. And I'm like, no, no. So this bag is awesome. So looking at from the front strap, you got this nice pouch in the front, opens up crochet hooks, a zipper pouch here for notions and stuff. Here has a bag where I have my Ziploc bag of <laughs> uh, yarn needles and scissors and post-it notes and pens and buttons. And, oh, that's just the sewed part of the strap. <laughs> then on the sides of the bag, it has pockets, so pocket here, and then other side, pocket here, I actually have some papers in that side. In the back of the bag, there is a zipper. So, where is the zipper? Oh, there you are, you were hiding. So the zipper part back here, so you can put books or tablets or something there what I generally will put back there. Then looking at the top, there's a, well, there's a big strap and two little straps. Looking at the top, there's two zippers. The top, top zipper will open. And I still have these little coaster thingies in here. So this part here has a zipper, another zipper. Inside, what do I got in here? I got a charger. <laughs> so a part here, I'll sometimes put patterns here that I've printed out. This right here is plastic. So right here, you can't really see it, but this is a zipper and it's shallow. So you can put like crochet hooks that maybe you're currently using on your project right there or knitting needles, if you had really long knitting needles that you wanted to use, or uh, that would also be a fantastic place to put, um, uh, I think it's called a broomstick or a crochet stick. You know, when you're working the broomstick stitch or one of those big stitches and you need that really giant um, crochet stick to make your stitches over. That would be, it's really long here. There are two little claspy buttons. So it'll close with a little snap. So that way it'll stay secured down or you can lift this up and then have access to your project. So this instantly opens up to the big section of the bag. And there's some Velcro here. And I don't exactly know what I would use that for. Maybe for yarn if I just, or that would like ruin your yarn, but um, not exactly sure what I would use that for, but there's some Velcro right there. So here's an opening if you wanna just quickly grab your project out. Close those up. 
But then the bottom section here has the holes. Let me see if I can, there you go. See, it has those holes and each hole, there's one, two, three, four, five, six holes. If I unzip this top part, you'll see that there are six compartments that each one of those holes open up to and they're all divided, all divided. So you've got compartments, got your project, lots of room, lots of room. And what I like about this is then I could just kind of thread the yarn through and then have six different color options or six different yarns for different projects if I even wanted to have multiple projects going on. And they are unraveling in their own individual pouch. You can't see, own individual pouch instead of being intermixed with each other tangling up. So this bag, it took me a second to start actually using it because I have so many bags that I think are amazing. Like I have my sheet bag that I think is awesome too. Um, and I do, I end up having so many bags that I have projects in like multiple places and I'm like, crap, where is my crochet hook? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had that experience where you just have so much going on that you lose you lose your stuff or you use or you lose your yarn needle or you use lose your scissors or something that happens to me but um, so right now this is the bag that I am using for um, all of my car trips because I'm in the car so much right now this has so many pockets and so much storage and so much organization that I have come to absolutely love it. It is my go-to and I have multiple projects in here. I actually should put, um, clean it out. I have some yarn that doesn't need to be in there right now. Um, I need to clean it out and organize my projects so that way I just take this with me everywhere in my car, wherever I'm taking kids to and from. <laughs> Super busy mom right now. We are hardcore in the both kids doing something completely different in two completely different locations at the same time. <laughs> so I'm driving a lot just trying to uh, get kids from point A to point B and so I just need to ha always have this thing stocked and yeah, I do have multiple bags that have stuff in them and each one has its own pros and cons uh, and so each one, but it's also really nice to just have something quick grab if I'm like, oh no, this bag has my big blanket, you know, something that can't really fit in here. But um, it's like, no, this is the big project that I'm working on. You're going in this bag and you're the only thing that's allowed in this bag. You know, <laughs> so uh, that I have that also. Um, gosh, I do. I have so much to talk to you guys about. Where am I at right now? a long time. I'm at a long time. So I'm actually, even though I had a lot to talk about, I'm going to cut this video off now. That way I have more to talk about tomorrow, hopefully. Um, cause I still have to work on that so I can record the finishing bits and get the video over to my editor. But I hope you enjoyed listening to me rant and just kind of like chilling out with me and letting me kind of just hang out. I will see you guys very soon with the next video where we will have the ability to talk about all the other things that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>